Today, I want to help you improve your everyday usage of tools commonly used for debugging. Tools like df, ls, du, dig, cat, all have modern open source alternatives. They show colorful output, syntax highlighting, but most importantly, better syntax. I'll showcase all of them today, and I highly recommend you check out the readme. And with that in mind, let's jump straight to it. FDE is a simple, fast, and user-friendly alternative to find. It's incredibly straightforward, speedy, and user-friendly alternative to the standard find command found in many operating systems. It offers a comprehensive suite of features, which can make it a great choice for anyone looking for an easy and convenient way to search for files and directories. You can see that I automatically get a color-coded result of anything that I can search for. I can search for directories, files, I can explicitly set the type of result that I'm looking for, much like the original find. With FD, I can also search for hidden files. And while searching for hidden files, I can provide any kind of regex or just a substring that I'm looking for within the file name. I can do that on normal files, I can do that with directories, I can do it with hidden files. It's really, really straightforward. There is also the option of providing your own actual regex string, like here, using the caret, I'm stating that I want every file that starts with a capital letter in my current directory. With E, I can set the extension of file that I'm looking for. So if I want all the markdown files in the current directory, I can search for that. Lastly, similarly to find, but with an easier syntax, I can send the find results to an exit program. For example, let's say I want to count all the lines within the files that I've found. I can send that to WC minus L for the lines and count the lines. I can do that on the to do that I've found with the extension for markdown or all the go files. Super straightforward. You can find FD on GitHub. You can also alias it to find, but it's a little bit different. So I just keep it as FD, but it's even easier with that alias for me. SD is an intuitive find and replace CLI. As the name suggests, it's a set alternative. It is an intuitive command line interface tool that provides a powerful and flexible alternative to set, allowing users to find and replace text with ease. Let's assume I want to replace check with the word something in this text file. What I'm going to do, instead of using said and its complex syntax, I'm going to write sd check and replace it with the word something. Now when I run that, I will reread the file and see what's happening. You can see the word just got magically replaced. It can't get any easier than that. By the way, the git signs to the left are part of that, which we'll touch on a little bit later. Now let's assume that I want to concat all the lines in the file, which is probably more useful with a key file or something like that. But let's just, for the sake of example, see how I can concat everything together. I run SD and I add the break line and replace that with a comma. I run that on the file and let's reread it to see everything collapsed into one long line. Like all other tools, SD can be found on GitHub. It can be either used as a drop-in replacement for set or just used as is. XI is a modern replacement for the traditional CLI LS, offering a host of additional features to make navigating your file system easier, more efficient, and equally as important, colorful. It provides a simple, clean output that lists the contents of a directory in a visually appealing way, providing a range of options for customizing the output to meet your specific needs. As you can see, I'm using XI as a complete drop-in replacement. I have two aliases, one using that with the icons, kit features for L, and LT is the same with its tree feature to list the structure of the tree of files underneath. I can also set the depth of a tree, whether I want icons, git status, and so on and so forth. So while the tree is good for structure, let's see how the git integration helps us understand what's going on within the file system. The two git columns show staged to the left and unstaged files to the right. N stands for new and M stands for modified. This helps keep track of changes by listing files. If we try to find the new file that I just added, we can see that the new file that's unstaged yet. If I git add the new file and list the files again, I can see that the new is now listed on the left side because that's now part of the git system. With EXA, I can also modify the results with flags. So I can remove the permissions, for example, from the results. I can, I can remove the user. I can run minus S for explicitly saying I want to see the file size. There are a ton of more features with a surprisingly good documentation on their website. Go check it out. 
Dust is an improved and more intuitive version of the popular DU command in Rust. It provides a clear overview of the size of a given folder and the contents, enabling users to quickly identify what files or directories are taking up most space. It presents everything in a nice visual graph that you can sort to your liking. You can query a single directory to see its structure or query multiple directories in one command to see all of them in a single tree. There's also an option to set the depth in which you want to run the command or set the target to ignore, like the dot .git for example. The minus Z flag allows you to set a certain size from which you want to see the results. There is also the option of reversing the result and many other features, all of which you can find either in the help or the readme of the project on GitHub. Dog is a command line DNS client. It's a DNS client much like Dig, but has a colorful output. It understands normal CLI argument syntax, support the DNS over TLS and DNS over HTTPS protocols, and it can emit JSON. You can see the difference between Dig and Dog just by the colorful output and readability of the result. Installation is easy as brew install dog. Once the tool is installed, you can view all the option it has to offer. Like many other tools in the video, other than the colorful output, the thing about these tools is their easy syntax and the straightforward manner in you, which you can just shoot dog and the domain or dog a c name and the domain. So it's easy to decide what you want to see and how you want to run it, easy to remember commands and easy to run whatever type of output. For example, here I'm running it through a different DNS server. Instead of querying Google as a DNS location, I'm using Cloudflare. The order of argument doesn't actually matter. You can reverse it or just change it, put the domain wherever you want to see it. For example, here I'm just querying all type of available DNS entries, but the domain is the second argument. And the list is colorful, easy to read, and exactly what you want. Xage is a drop-in replacement to CURL. It's a friendly and fast tool for setting HTTP requests. It's perfect for quickly and easily making requests to any web server. The response is colorful as with all other tools, but the amazing feature of Xage is its ability to provide the most straightforward syntax you can think of. Xage is actually alias to HTTP on my local host for simplicity. The default mode is just getting a response. So if I just type XH in the domain, I can get a colorful response. I can see all the headers that were returned from the server and the JSON encoded string of the result. Providing parameters is as easy as assigning a value to a key. Using the equal sign would mean this is a string. Using colon and equal would mean this is an integer. The offline flag here is used for a dry run request. You can use double equal sign to set JSON parameters. If you respond with a JSON structure, it will be automatically color coded and the syntax will be highlighted and the structure will be laid out in front of you. Downloading is as easy as using the minus minus download flag. With CRL, you'd have to save the output to a certain location. It's as easy as wget, so you basically get all the features of both tools into one with its speed and colorful output and everything you want. Using key and value separated by a colon would mean you can set headers with any type of request. Beyond that, the tool isn't limited to either get or post. You can use any type of HTTP request method, for example, put or delete, update, and so on and so forth. The cool thing about it that it reads the STD in. So for example, if I'd like to pipe something into a post request, I could basically set up a list of integers and pipe that into an HTTP post request to send to the server. If I look at the headers, I can see the data that was sent is correctly set in the data that was part of the response. Another cool syntax feature is the ability to request for a certain domain, which is pretty straightforward. But if you were to use the protocol or have mistaken and used semicolon slash slash in the domain, that would still work just as well. Check out NCDU, the NCURSES disk usage. It's a super speedy way to figure out which directories are hogging up your hard drive space. It's based on the classic du command, but with a cool cursors based graphical interface. Running it within any path opens the list of files and how much disk space they're taking. This doesn't say much, you can just delete the files or just move forward. 
But if we try and run it again in a different location, you can see how you can visually understand which of the files are taking what type of resources of your disk space. I'm going to run it in my home path just to see how it scans the entire file system. I can see the disk size that's being scanned and the list of files. Instead of waiting, let's just scan my documents directory to see how YouTube takes the vast majority of space so I can know where to clean. DAF is a modern drop-in replacement for the classic Linux TF. With that, running in any directory, you can find the disk usage for the current path. It's as easy as brew install DAF like other tools shown in the video. And compared to the boring DF output, it shows a much more interesting result. If I run DAF and comparing to the previous DF, you can see the colorful output and a table that shows visually which path takes the most space, what do we need to debug, maybe we need to delete some files, how much is used, what's available, far more easier to read the output and understand what's going on. Beyond this space and utilization, you can see the file system name, where it's mounted, the actual type of the file system that's in use. If you're working with storage daily or debugging something that has to do with your file system, that's super easy to understand. If you're running or writing a software that manages file systems like me, Duff can provide a JSON output like you see now on the screen, and that's easy to query with any JSON query language. In this occasion, I'm piping that to JQP, which I've shown in previous videos. And JQP gives you an interactive shell to um, understand your JSON structure, query that using JQ query language, and you can visually see the results on the right pane. Our last tool in the list is BAT, which is a classic drop-in replacement for CAT. With BAT, you get the same as with other type of tools we've shown here before, colorful output, nicer syntax, easier way to query stuff. Simply reading the file shows syntax highlighting, line numbers, and everything is organized within a table. Uh, but if we do the same and add the minus capital A flag, we can see the show all option, which shows all the non-printable characters. BAT can also show you the diff, so you can tell which of the lines were changed in a certain document that's printed. It can also concatenate a few files if you want to read them, maybe even through a regex. So here I'm just reading all the Go files under a certain directory, which are just appended one after the other. Let's use the XH tool we've seen before to fetch some kind of data from the internet. If I do the same and pipe it into BAT, I can see the same result, but now it has the colorful output, syntax highlighting, and everything is in order for me to query with less style. It can also be used as an executable to handle a result. So if I were to use FD and the minus X for executable, I can send the result to BAT and now I can read whatever FD has found as a file list now presented inside BAT. You can find all the links to all the tools in the description below. I highly suggest you also take a look at my video presenting the terminal tools that I use and how I set it up. See you on the next video.